What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Thanks for having me on the show, Kevin. It's been an interesting week, feeling into your energies as well. Um, I am based in Austria at the moment, in Europe, and my name is Brigitte. I am honored to be on the show. Um, you know, I thought about this, how to introduce myself when all identities are collapsing, but traditionally speaking, if I were to go into the personality or the identities, I would identify as a medicine woman. Um, I would identify as a teacher, a healer, um, a channel, a guide, someone that initiates others, an activator, um, many, many things. But, you know, beyond all of those things, I really am just me. And it's, it's I think, this sort of... Um, reverse engineering strategy of all these labels we try to give ourselves and get and the reverse engineering is holy shit I'm actually just me <laughs> so the most important thing that I try to do is just to be myself really really heart-centered and just to be myself yeah it's great to have you on and thank you for coming on as well so I think you're someone that people have always seen your energy obviously there's a journey that's taking you on this path. Where did it start for you? How, where did this energy work start to become more um, noticeable by you that you were sensing people's energy, you were able to tap into people's 
energy in a sense. And um, what was that like, that journey? I feel it's an interesting question, and I've really actually only um, sort of been moving through the answers of that this week in, you know, in preparation and knowing that I'm going to have this um, experience with you. And I feel like there weren't really any sort of huge defining moments. But when I think back now, it just always was. It's, um, you know, and that's the empath. That's the empath. I'm highly intuitive. I would call myself Claire Cognizant. Um, and clairsentience more, more than anything and that used to irritate me in the in the latter years of me doing this work as in like where is my clairvoyance where is my clear audience but in um, as a matter of fact I'm so grateful to have been this huge empathic heart um, to feel through people and and people noticed me and I think it was more an aspect of like wow she's really confident <laughs> She's really, really confident. She stands out. But I never, I kind of didn't identify with being different from anybody. I didn't see myself as different different from anybody. I just um, was able to pick up, I guess, like telepathically what people were thinking. And, and, and I feel with empaths, the first question is always like, hey, is everything okay? You know, and maybe that started happening more and more where I was like, why am I always the one picking this up? And when I speak to the other person, they're kind of like, yes, actually, no, things are not okay. And then I would be like, okay, well, I'm kind of feeling that. So what's happening here? So I think it was a really um, fluid progression, not not anything like, boom, oh my gosh, you know, this, this big like, oh, I'm actually quite intuitive here. It was just, it always was. I think because of my gymnastics background um, and being an only child and um, you know, it's kind of being in a gymnastics training, like Olympic training from the age of five, I was, um, I exuded a, a certain amount of confidence. So I think maybe that's just cruised me through, um, you know, my, my time space reality. Right. So when was the transition into this work then? Um, I mean, I used to sort of after university, I was going to a lot of festivals because I had a very disciplined life with my sports and I was quite an academic. I hated university. It was an absolute shit show for me. Um, you know, I passed, but I was not present. <laughs> I was not present. And I started to go to a lot of festivals because like my high school sort of um, um, experience was uh, diminished or different from others in the sense that I was doing sports. I was always doing sports. And so this sort of energy of, you know, this young adult came in and I started going to festivals, um, psychedelic trance festivals. And that's where my sort of journey began because um, I began to play with psychedelics, natural psychedelics, mushrooms. And um, from there, things started to sort of evolve where People used to ask me to assist them. People were always asking me, wow, your energy, the, the, da, 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 you know, you, you know, and these festivals are like, you know, three, four days and people get pretty, you know, <laughs> pretty sloppy out there. Um, they don't look after themselves. And so this was just a natural thing that I would do is look after myself, look after my friends, um, you know, always be fresh and, and abundant in my energy source. And so I began to notice that people were not doing that. And it was odd to me because I'm like, well, don't you want the greatest experience? Um, so this was kind of the entry into me beginning to understand what it was that I, how I was impacting people. And um, that slowly sort of came in where I began to uh, set up little healing stations. I used to do sports massage as part of my degree. I used to set up little healing stations um, and and so it just began and it flowed and it began. Now, you've been doing this full time for how long? Um, almost 10 years now. OK. Yeah. So almost 10 years. when you say about um, university, where did you do that? Was that um, South Africa? This was in South Africa. Yeah. This was in South Africa. But I feel like it was just a, such a I, I was still in a huge amnesia space, meaning like I said, it, it my soul knew that this was, I mean, I couldn't decide what to study. I didn't know. I could have studied many things. And obviously, when I when I started digging further into soul aspects, I was like, 
of course I created so much confusion for myself because I have been that thing and I have done that thing and I'm interested in this thing. And I, and, and actually from an Akashic perspective, I was obviously, you know, under the understanding that I could do any of these things, but what is the thing that gains me the most freedom at this point in time? You know, how do I become a free being? Um, and that was kind of my objective. And along with going to being in this festival space and the psychedelic space, and beginning to play with my consciousness and, and you know, maybe in a what would seem as a rebellious um, a state of being, um, it just really started opening up. And I, and I would call my, you know, I was the diligent athlete and academic, but within me is also the huge rebel. You know, I I do not like authority. I, I want to do everything again. You know, I just want to do things differently. And so, um, you know, stepping into this work, that which we call my work, which is, you know, basically um, plant medicine, it's changed now. It is, it is changing now. It's not that I don't do it anymore. But that was my beginning stages of like, you know, I really want to work with this medicine because what I am experiencing is fucking profound and there is no ways there's no ways that I could let myself not allow others to experience this outside of a party space outside of a recreational space like there is something so sacred to this this work um, that I had to share it and so my journey of further introspection began there because you know, it's like, okay, you're, you're talking about, you're talking about psychedelics here, girly. <laughs> you know, this is not to be, this is not a pipe dream. And you are not, you you come from a stable family, you've had the degree, you, you don't have to do this. Um, and I am a leader, and I am, I, I'm, I'm a great salesperson, and I can wrangle my way through any corporate ladder, but hmm, maybe not some, um, not authentic enough for me not authentic enough for me. And so um, I started going to a lot of business seminars at the time and simultaneously reading spiritually based books. And what I started to see was this pattern of, you know, those people standing up there in terms of their success, their entre entrepreneurial success, were following their heart, being passionate, doing all the things, you know, this the, the attitude of gratitude. And I was, I was sort of seeing the similarities between the spiritual books I was reading and what these people were, um, you know, their pattern of success. And so I started to just merge that and merge that and merge that. But the business stuff was always there in the background because, I come from an entrepreneurially based family, but it was it was more and more the spiritual work, more and more the spiritual books, more and more, and just linking it into a business um, sort of skeleton or construct. Right. Well, I guess when you say that you mix with people that were living their passion, their purpose. Yes. It's not always like that, is it? Though you know, it can seem very successful on the outside. But actually, they're not living their passion. Correct, correct, and it it it, it created um, you know, Sorry, I just to just to let people know when I'm really speaking from the heart, um, you know, the soul aspect of me will come in, and 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 the light language will come in. So I might I may jump and switch here and there just to let you know. But you know, through this process, I'm so grateful for my architecture. My soul contract, if we want to call it that, um, those belief systems are also diminishing for me now to a certain degree, um, or they're changing, or I'm looking at them from a different perspective. But the me that um, I understood back then, I'm so grateful for my for my experience through entrepreneurship because, Jesus, you've got to have a set of balls, you know. <laughs> You really do. And 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 especially when I'm an only child and I'm coming from a family where they know that I'm a great leader and a this and a that and I and I and I can. I've had these amazing corporate jobs and had salaries thrown in front of me when I have absolutely no experience. Um and it's because of my energy, right? I, I can it's because of my energy, but you know, moving through entrepreneurship slash spirituality was such a profound teaching space for me because it made me just completely realign constantly, constantly, constantly. And what was the, the denominator that kept me in alignment was love. 
Are you doing what you are doing because it is heart-based? Are you in the frequency of love? Because anything else is a bullshit story and it's cognitive dissonance, you know? Um, <laughs> and this is this is the issue of the human race, right? Cognitive dissonance, the lies we tell ourselves, you know? Well, there's something about these times, isn't there, where a lot of us are being, not all of us, not all of us, but there are people, maybe we speak as in uh, people in this field into this so into these types of subjects are kind of being pulled into that space of uh are you doing what you love uh, yes yeah i think immediately when you get into this type of work I don't, well even this type of research maybe for a lot of people probably a lot of people watching this are on a on a journey right mm. and uh, mm. when you do go on that journey it does force you into that space of uh you know have i been doing what i really enjoy and would i would i do what i do even if there was no money to it correct correct and this is the thing you know particularly within the plant medicine space you know you're not you're not just having a client enter into an online session or even if it is a face-to-face -face session and you're moving through some channeling and and you you you're bringing information you're bringing a message and it's kind of light, bright, bubbly, um, you know. But when it, when you're in plant medicine space, you are holding somebody's psyche in your hands, you know. And 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 you are you're holding space for their death, you know. You're holding space for their death, and within that, you've got to make sure that this is in alignment and that you are not working from the ego. So again, I'm in such gratitude for my contract, like I say, you know, um, for bringing me through these spaces because from very early on, I mean, I put down like 200,000 rand, you know, to, to, to sign up to some business course, ridiculous amounts of money um, for someone to teach me how to do blah, 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 blah. And basically, I decided this first business is going to be this business. I want to do plant medicine journeys. And I mean, that's pretty ballsy. Like, you cannot be in your ego while making that decision. And, you know, one of the things that I said to myself was like, Brigitte, you're reading all these books. Amazing. Simply put, there's two frequencies, the frequency of love and the frequency of fear. Are you willing to do what it takes to go into this line of work? Meaning, are you willing to go against the system? Are you willing to fight the good fight here? Not that I want to be in a fighting frequency, but for, for um, you know, the sake of, of, of conversation, using that, that terminology, you know, are you willing? And my answer was, yes, I am, because I believe this medicine needs to go out there. And so then, of course, so the decision has been made, the business has begun, or the modality has begun. Now it's marketing that modality when it is an illegal substance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How do we market? I can only market from the heart, emitting a frequency and understanding the universal laws that whoever is pinging that frequency in resonance with me will find it and come. And from there, we can have private conversations about what I'm actually marketing. <laughs> right, right. We will get yeah. into the plant medicine. And what I think the plant medicine you're talking about is mushrooms, I'm guessing. Yes. And yes. Um, I think that you also uh, work with um, marijuana, I guess, sometimes. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny, isn't it? You know, the, how things are illegal that actually there's been around for so long and you know, it's almost like telling us that we're not allowed. And they're natural. And they're, they're natural. from the earth. <laughs> and, and to say it's illegal to put into our bodies when we're, you know, consenting adults, do you know what I mean, in a sense? Right. You know, we're of an age to make up our own mind. Um, but this brings us into our dynamic of the current state of affairs as well. Are we not adults, consenting adults, or what are we consenting to, and and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. There's a lot changing in the world. So much. <laughs> so Constant. much. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Now, we will get into the plant medicine because that's a big part no of your work as well. Your website is? It's Kartra. Sorry, I, I never actually. Hold on. It's Brigitte Heeb, B-R-I-G-I-T-T-E. So Brigitte, the very German aspect. Brigitte Heeb dot Kartra dot com. 
Okay. Well, we're going to put that on the screen, so it'll be coming up on the screen. Anything Thank we talk so about, much. again, as well, it will be in the description of the YouTube video. Just, just go to the show more, and you'll see all the links for Begita uh, down yeah. below, and anything we talk about as well. So, okay. There's a lot to your work. We, we could go in just to one area, right, and just do the whole show on that. And I'm going to try to touch on as many topics as humanly possible in the time that we've got together. <laughs> just remind us again, yeah. you're based in... I'm based in Austria at the moment, and I will be in Thailand in January um, for two months. And then I have to head to Egypt because my soul is calling me there. So you've said this to me that you're very nomadic right now. You've had very little assets with you. It's easy just to move. Um, again, it's this going against the grain, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Yeah. And you feel comfortable doing that. How has that affected things like relationships for you? <laughs> Um, I moved out of a big relationship uh, prior to coming to to Europe. It was part of my um, journey of expansion, journey of expanding my consciousness to come to Europe. So I kind of got the calling. My relationship, a five and a half year relationship came to an end. Um, and yeah, so it's not easy. But whether I'm traveling or not, relationships have never been easy for me because I whatever you want to call it. I'm psychic. I see everything. I, I, I see, I feel, I can call you out on your own bullshit. And, and that can be very triggering for many masculines at this point in time or many beings at this point in time. Um, you know, I joke with my clients. I joke with many people. And actually, you know, to introduce myself, I could say I'm a professional bear poker. You know, I poke the bear. That's what I'm there to do. And I, I trigger a lot of people. Um, so it takes a very strong, um, centered, heart-centered masculine and individual to, to come to a, a, a vibrational match with me. Um, and I don't really, you know, yes, I'm a human. I, I live in a fantasy world every now and then, but it really comes through in dream space. Um, in terms of my personal daily practice or spiritual practice, I have orgasmic moments all the time. So that aspect of me is fulfilled, if you want to call it that. Um, with regards to my friendships, I create deep intimacy. And it. it's why with you as well, prior to the session, I said, you know, do you consent to me messaging you? Because I want to connect. That's what the human, you know, that that's what we want at the moment. We really want to connect. And so, yeah, relationships Shmishmationships, you know, like. <laughs> well, look, we're all human, and uh, there is no escape in this human experience. You don't, I know, you don't want to escape it. Uh, what I'm saying really is, uh, no matter what gifts you've got, you've still got to go through the shit. <laughs> you've still got yeah. to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. of this human experience, which is fine. Which is, it's all, everything's part of learning, isn't it? And uh, yeah. getting to really know yourself. Now, you did give me a reading. I will say that. So when when you gave me now, actually. It was a very brief text reading, right? Yes. I've got to yes. say, oh, my God, it was spot on. Oh, <laughs> my God. Um, you have no idea how deeply I've been feeling into your energy field. Or maybe you do. I'm sure you felt it. But when you gave me that, well, thank you. When you gave me that reading, what is that? And if other people want that type of reading, what is that reading? Obviously, you've got your services on your website. So just tell yeah. us about maybe even just having a reading and how that works as well. And is it channeled? Is it how does it work? <laughs> it's really, really interesting. And this has been a part of my business or the structure that's been quite difficult for me because I really believe that I am capable of assisting you through many different modalities slash let's take that word out by me being authentically me and present, I am able to assist. So, you know, the website, um, which I'm very proud of because I do it all myself, is creates a skeleton structure. So it's kind of like book in the time period, you know, an hour or an hour and a half with me and let's see where it goes. Usually I just, you know, I've just got to drop into the heart and, and be the mirror, um, be the trigger, be whatever. And, and often it will go into a channeling. Um, my longer sessions, so 90 minute sessions, um, will probably move into coaching, which I really, really love strategy stuff with people. I really love to dig in and get people to think because that's the, that's the empowered, um, work. I can channel. And yes, we will shift energy. We will open the heart through that channel. You will feel it. You might move, 
you know, you might exit from that space feeling like, wow, that was pretty mystical and magical because the channeling is mostly in light language, you know, and people are mystified by this. And that's amazing. But the, some people require the cognitive teachings in order to really feel that empowered state of being and, and to be able to move forward. And for me to feel after the session that they are, okay, cool, they've got some juicy nuggets to go home with rather than just be in this sort of psycho spiritual etheric space of like, wow, you know, I'm cosmic, I'm galactic. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with the, the awe or the awe in which we, we express ourselves through those experiences, but um, back down to reality, back down to earth, back down to the basics. Um, and that's how I like to teach what happened with you with the reading with you. I really just sat in meditation. And so often I may do a reading for someone and I also will sit with their energy field before really decoding and closing it off for quite some time afterwards um, until I'm kind of like, okay, cool. All, all the teachings are given. So often I give a lot more, a lot more than just the 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Where do I start with that reading? Well, it was a very small reading and maybe I yes. needed it just to know who you was, right? Yes. Potentially, right? Yes. But in that reading, you said something along the following lines. You said, um, <laughs> okay, you, you said, I keep seeing you placing uh, fist, fists clenched and tension in the jaw. Okay. Yeah. And then the feeling of entrapment, much like a grounded teenager, aware of why they're in the situation they are, but in feeling powerless to change it. A sense of big size, eyes rolling, hands through the air, to the hair, sorry, frustration and irritation. And every time I ask for confirmation, especially in these frequency, my light language comes in to assist the clear, the clear, the sort of clearing of it. I guess that's what you were saying, right? Yes. This yes. was a, this was a big one. I mean, you don't know me from Adam, right? Really. No. Um, I, I feel a sense of sexual frustration as well. Well, that that I don't talk about, right? And and that <laughs> that, that that is so true. Right. And can I share something? There's actually something I eliminated there because what I, because when I ask, I always check, right? And there was, I was, go, I, I, <laughs> I kind of ask, okay, cool. Is this like a level one, level two, level three, you know? And, and I did it out of 10 and I wrote it down and then I thought, let me just, let me just leave this part out. But it was, yeah, sufficient enough and funny you bring it up. So, well, I don't talk about that. And we never talked about that, but that no. <laughs> I will say, I was like, wow, this, this, this is a different type of reading. Um, even though it was very brief, just like to know that you yeah. can connect like that. That was incredible. Um, yeah. And again, I don't talk about that, but I'm telling the whole audience now, right? Uh, but, <laughs> you know, but it's true. I just, you know, um, hey, we're only human. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, but I think that comes from a lot of past lives of being locked away in churches. And uh, I think as well that um, it's something I've got to address in this life. And I think I am going to, right? Um, not just by getting a partner, but by uh, by other things as well. Um, mm. What's another important? Yeah, there's a sense of boredom I pick up on, sparkle with uh, um, other aspects of, you know, causing frustration, um, uh, something to do with the show you said <laughs> well that couldn't be further from the truth neither uh yeah th there was things that i won't it was only a very short you know yeah, uh, yeah. energy reading but wow um so essentially I, I pick up on frequencies and and what i do is try to be very um direct with what the frequency is so it's like okay discomfort is discomfort but we can kind of, or, or fear, you know, we can say those two frequencies, love or fear, you know, they're in a, in, 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 in a bandwidth, but when we go down and we go, okay, cool. Is it frustration or is it anxiety? Is it, um, is there complicate, you know, like I really like to get in. And so I kind of just tune in and zone in and I'm, you, you know, like, because Anger is different to anxiety or and anger is different to frustration, you know, so that's kind of how I like to tune in. And oh, yeah. there's many days where I think, God, I'd be so much happier just being in a different country right now. 
Mm. And, I, you know, it, it means giving up a lot that I've worked towards getting. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes we're our own block. Sometimes we need to get to a point where we're pushing ahead through the wall uh, or whatever we're doing to ourselves um, to really get the message. Do you know what I mean? Or there gets a, a, a breaking point, maybe. Or maybe we're happy with that. <laughs> maybe some of us are just like, oh, if it's painful, it's good. <laughs> it doesn't have to be painful. Yeah, well, you know, we're used to suffering. We're used to suffering. It's a frequency that we are familiar with. And it's a frequency that provides us with comfort because the frequency of elation, the frequency of empowered state of being, the frequency of um, freedom, enlightenment, nirvana, whatever you want to call it, is not a familiar frequency to us. But in order to attain that, the other frequencies must kind of go through a death and entropy, you know, and and this is where the death process comes in. And, and it's kind of where um, my work about embodied spirituality comes in. So we are not having fanciful ideas about psycho spiritual activations that are not actually happening, but it's happening in the body. We're not having false Kundalini experiences, but we can fucking feel it in our bodies and we can feel the collapsing of old geometries and, and the rebirthing of new geometries. Because let's be honest, you say we block ourselves sometimes, um, but in this like, in the quantum dynamics, we are everything. You are me, I am you, we are, we are it. So it is all us. So therefore it is always us blocking us. And it is always us um, allowing for that, that moment of evolution. Um, and it, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're so ancient. We are so ancient. Mm, well, we keep doing the same thing, don't we? Apparently you keep I know, coming I know, back. But I, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I do feel this is a life of, uh, lives of change for us all. I, I do think that there's a potential to stop some of these patterns and, he, you know, well, sure, I was going to use the word heal them, but actually just go into your next greatest version and stop putting yeah. it off. You yeah. know, um, whatever that may be. I mean, you did talk about that. I'm um, there's this thing of me looping in a sense, um, and not many people understand that really. But I, I totally understand that. Um, every day is a Groundhog Day right now, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I need to put that alarm on my phone. It's Groundhog Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really do actually, because it, it is. Um, but yes, yeah, so you were you were dead right there. So very impressed. Thanks. Um, so let's just go to even the mind stopping us for a lot of people. It's the mind actually that's that's also the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we have been taught to think out of the box. I feel the education system is an absolute failure. I feel indoctrination is you know just been huge, and it's it's made us into each other when we are actually so different from each other and everything everything is sourced from something that has been given to us instead of from the inside out and and this is why I said in the beginning it's this process of um reverse engineering okay forget about everything forget even about your history because that's all smoke and mirrors right if we go 50, 550 million years back and and we really begin looking at creationism stories we start asking okay cool are the archangels where did the archangels come from uh, is this all just colonization from the vatican whatever the point is we've forgotten to question things and so we became so good at reciting things and and so good at mimicking each other you know we're just modeling each other and this is this is the concern in the spiritual community at the moment. And I spoke about spiritual distortion pre, uh, prior to this conversation is how many people out there are mimicking what they are seeing on social media with regards to what it means to be spiritual, what it looks like to be spiritual. And actually they're not having embodied experiences. And this is really, really dangerous space, but here we are in the soup of source consciousness and it just is, it's okay. Um, and this is why authentic expression and, and our authentic nature and speaking about sex and orgasms and masturbation and fucking energy is so beautiful and, and forgetting everything that we learned and starting to feel 
does this sit right with me? Is my mind in the way? Am I, is, is this, how is this feeling in the body? Because the body, you know, although we are not the mind, we are not the body. Jesus, the body is holding the DNA. The body is holding the memories. And when that begins to unlock through embodied activations, we start to remember in a different way, or we start to call ourselves out on our own cognitive dissonance and our own lies. Very deep true. Space. It, deep it is. Space. It is. Yeah. And then there's all those subconscious beliefs as well on top of all of that. Course. Of course, of course, of course. And, you know, dare you go wrong in the spiritual community, dare you say something wrong with we're the most judgmental community on the planet. That is know? true. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's a lot of lives that look so perfect in the spiritual community, isn't mm. there? from some of the people that sort of like drive it forward and you know with with bigger numbers and actually life's far from that that's I, 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 it's just a it's bullshit it's, you, know, you know you yeah you asked me about like my monadic i mean my nomadic space um that i'm in one of the reasons i did it beyond the calling number one and number two, not really having finances to be in a solid place. I, and I, I don't want that. I don't I don't want to rent a house. No, no, no. I don't want to do that, right? But one of the reasons I've done this is to show people that it is possible. To show people how attached we become to material things that have no meaning, no value, and no purpose. And are having less and less value these days as inflation rises and, and, and the systems begin to crumble and dissolve. Um, so what happens when you are left with so-called nothing, no thing? You have you, an entire fucking universe within you. You have your wits, you have your knowing, you have your DNA, you have your memories, you have everything with, within you. But we've become so accustomed to needing those things. And so I do this as an example as well. Right. But you do it as a, as a single woman. I mean, if you had children, yes. then it would be different, wouldn't it? Or would it? I was going to say, not particularly, no. So I have been having deep, deep, uh, deep visions and profound. Um, so I've been having deep visions about having a child. I am single. But since I arrived in Europe, I, I have had multiple, multiple, multiple dreams of this. I have been doing um, some dragon lineage work and I there's been aspects there. This is part of my Egypt story as well. So there is a seeding coming in. There is a soul waiting to be birthed through me. And this will be a starseed soul. You know, it, I believe everything we are told believe the opposite. So overpopulation, actually, there's not enough starseed children coming in with the technologies required to assist planet Earth, right? Or some of them. We all have it within us, but there's higher technologies from these future little seedings, you know. And um, if the seeding does come in in this life, right, it's not a parallel life of mine. I will continue as, as I am. Um, that child will travel with me and we will continue the work. I don't believe in the schooling system in any way, shape or form. I believe the world is changing so much and the frequencies are going to be so intense that that which you formerly knew as your normal and your earth is just going to completely shift in front of your eyes. And so, you know, I, I want to be with that child. I want to I want to live and breathe and, and, and be with that child. And yes, there is education, there is knowledge to be gained. Um, but within nomadic communities where there are many sisters, many brothers, um, many fathers, many uncles, grandmothers, this is you know the ancient way, but in a modern um, in a modern setting. And a, and, a, and a changing setting. And am I terrified? Of course I'm terrified, but I know how my dream space works. <laughs> and I've woken up going, holy shit, have I, am I pregnant? Like, have I had an immaculate conception? Yeah, like that's how real it is. So 
Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Uh, well, it, it does. I didn't yeah, expect you to say that. Um, well, that will will be a blessing when whoever you meet and, you know, um, any child's a, a gift, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah um, I'm sure if you're having those those dreams I, I, it's funny isn't it you could yeah you you some dreams are very different to others and i'm sure the the dreams you're having it's it's you're aware of the dream aren't you i'm guessing to be to even remember it you know maybe you what do they call it conscious dreaming i'm not probably using the right yeah, word lucid there. dreaming lucid dreaming sorry yeah mm. yeah i mean within shamanism or traditional shamanism the dream space is highly important um, and if we are describing ourselves or the teachings are, well, my teachings are everything is energy. Um, and from that perspective, we are multidimensional in nature. So my dream world, you know, and, and we get to this timing or this point within our conscious um, co-creation and our conscious experience where you, be, uh, well, I have begun to ask myself, you know, I've, I've woken up on earth in, in 3D plane and felt like I've been put back in a box, right? So as I wake up, huh, I'm back in the box. So it's like, to me, my dream space is 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 actually far more of a reality for me than this because what I'm noticing on earth right now is just fucking stories playing out. It's storylines and storylines from the past repeating over and over again. And quite frankly, I am bored of it. I love it. I have compassion for it, but I'm bored of it. So for me, moving into multidimensional space within my dream world and my dream reality is as much real than this this reality it is super important to me right absolutely well that's um well thank you for sharing that that's, that's very interesting yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean i was going to touch on the, the sort of dream what you do but um i think you've pretty much covered it there as well um i wanted to talk about spiritual traps as well because that's something you, you mentioned when mm. we spoke uh, offline mm. Okay, so this is where the triggering comes in, right? And and we spoke about mimicking earlier or modeling how human human behavior, we are just modeling things. And obviously there is so much more to model at this point in time because we have social media, number one. And number two, most people are addicted to technology. So we are constantly being bombarded with these things. And of course, we happen to be in a time space within our um, planetary shift where we are seeking transformation. We are having existential conversations. So possibly the highlight is on spiritual content creators, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What begins to happen through this modeling process, and, and please know that I'm not taking away any experience from any individual that they have had. However, um, as the empath intuit, clay cognizant, clay sentient, um, and and having the experience that I've had, particularly within with with medicine work and and holding the spaces that I've held with masters, where I'm just like I didn't even know that shit was possible. I can see through distortions very quickly, and I can feel through those distortions. And this is where we come into the beautiful topic of channeling, right? Is this a safe or is it a dangerous thing? And I've watched many of your shows and and there are there are those where I'm like, oh my gosh, what a fucking Christ at heart, what a heart-centered being. And others that I I do not invalidate their stories, but I do believe there's a sense of false channeling there. Now, let me explain that. When it is happening to that person, how that person is experiencing it, I believe is absolutely authentic for the time space capsule that they are in at that point in time. But I feel there is a restriction when it comes to channeling or channels or channelers where they just stop at that point. And I feel the ascension protocol, the ascension dynamics or the technologies, the the quantum and source technologies that are out there within an ever evolving, you know, solar system are so much bigger and so much more and just hugely profound. And so this is why I say the teachings or, or getting people to experience things for themselves is so important because the entrapments are so huge. And I'll speak to things like, um, 
let's take for for example sake where we are at on planet earth at the moment and everything that is crumbling we know why it's been a patriarchal system now we ask ourselves any spiritual person will say oh cool this has been going on for thousands of years okay now could we extend that to say it's been going on for millions of years if we really go back in galactic history and we go to 50 550 million years ago we get to the taran wars right so jesus have we been doing this for 550 million years the point I'm trying to make is if that was happening then and grid structures and energetics had begun to be um, played with and, and energetics changed and, and, and things exploding, right, and, and things changing, then couldn't we say, couldn't the imagination take us to this place of we've been in a distorted reality matrix for that long? And if that is the case, then how do we actually know we are channeling the Christ and the archangels and all of this when there have been wars that we are only, the vibration and the consciousness on the planet are only at the point in time now to begin thinking about it. So when I think in this manner, I'm just like, whoa, um, I just want to be in my heart and allow whatever comes from there. And, and, and this is my perception on channeling at this point in time. Like, who am I channeling? Me. What does me mean? Everything. You know, am I in the heart? Yes. Otherwise, I couldn't, I couldn't give a transmission. Um, but I feel like, and, and please know that this belief system of mine has really actually only been coming in and evolving in the last Mm, two months for me where I'm I'm looking far more at quantum technology and and the simplicity of monistic metaphysics there is no duality everything is one and from that perspective be in the heart let's not label things so that people become attached to oh gosh but I'm not channeling this council and this council and I still think there's a lot of bullshit to move through for potentially a long time before we are truly sovereign. Do you know, I think some of the best channel material that stands for the test of time is the Seth material. I haven't, I haven't, yeah, I haven't. Yeah, when you dive into that, and I've barely dived yeah. into it, it still I mean, stands. There's so much to dive it's, into. It, it's, there's so much. Even the early years, a friend of mine was telling me that he had been reading the the early years of uh, of the Seth material and how much time they put into the you know this 10,000 hour idea of you know becoming a master in uh, after 10,000 hours well they did that mm. they, they did that as a couple there was you know mm. when you read Seth speaks you're you know you're you're at the um you're at the uh a stage where they they you're not seeing all the failures that that um Jane Roberts had uh, with mm. the ESP tests and everything else, and so much other stuff uh, that that uh, her, her husband Robert Butts guided her through the many, 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 many years of of getting getting her fine tuned. Mm. I, you know, there's something about the Seth material mm. that just makes I'll it stand out. It. Yeah, yeah. And this thing, I mean, when we dive into a topic, we're just like, oh my gosh, you know. And then again, like I said earlier, it's put it back and meditate on it. Don't, don't absorb all of it. Just create breaks, you know. Very true, very true. So let's just keep this to yours as well. So when you channel, you're channeling you. Would you say that's your higher self? I would call it aspects of my soul and avatar and monadic self. So depending on which frequency bandwidth I am uh, resonating in, um depends on the the frequency of the transmission and so it's like if i Yeah, I believe, I mean, our reality is based on our belief systems, right? So as it all crumbles, for me, but just 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 it, it con continuing to knock down those belief systems, 
what am I channeling? I believe that I am channeling frequency. I believe that I am channeling technology. I believe that I am channeling, um, yeah, technology from different dimensional um, layers. And at times it can be super high and at other times it may just be my soul body. So it could move to my monadic and it could be my soul. Interesting. So how do you protect yourself when you're doing that work as well? Do you feel that you don't need that? Or I guess maybe I should combine these two with questions with you. Protection and discernment. Because I think with yourself it's sort of one, I feel. But yeah. you can, yeah. Yeah. So when I first started this work, I was, uh, you know, I started with the angels um, and the archangelics and um, Archangel Michael. That has systematically been kind of being removed from my space or dissipating from my space. But that was my belief system at the time that this this blue ray being with his sword of light and chalice of sound was my fucking ultimate protector. And of course, again, we speak of being in plant medicine space. Protection is extremely important. Um, but then I would bring individuals in. Um, so uh, kind of master teachers within that protective space to so that I could do my work. And I know that the space was protected within my channeling experiences, I definitely grid, I create a grid, gridded system. So I work with the Cathara grid or the, the you know, uh, the tree of life. Um, and these are technologies, and this is what I'm speaking to, the, the simple metaphysics, which is nice for those people who are like, whoa, this is a bit woo-woo. It's like, okay, cool. We can go woo-woo in the feminine and be like, oh, let's call in the priestess, this and the that and the that. But my belief systems at this point are those are disempowering distortions, right? Um, where when we just focus on the physical body and it moving energy up the spine and you can feel those centers within the body begin to activate and um, pulsate. So, so there's a grid system that I set up. Um, I definitely move into meditation and there are sort of commands. Like, so if you are driving a spaceship or flying a spaceship and, and you need to command, you know, I will come. I will. I will create certain commands. That is my belief system. That are um, entering into the algorithm of the quantum field that I am speaking to because I am it. And those commands would be something like, um, you know, any inorganic, um, any inorganic matrix structures to to an AI um, structures to exit from my space. Um, for the laws of the universe to assist me, um, those beings of light within my soul, avatar, and monadic bodies, which are my team. So my teams being separate from me, but if we're all one, they are my avatar, my soul, and my monadic body. So who am I channeling? Myself and source. I don't know how else to answer it. You know? uh, okay. So... I ask myself this daily. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a fair question. So yeah, of when someone comes to you for a session and we've already answered this, but you're really assessing them when you meet them in, as to what you think is best for them, right? Correct. And yes. if they do want a, a channel session, then I'm sure that will be part of their session, but it may not be all that you feel that they need. And in that Correct. session as well, they can ask any questions that they wish to ask it may not be the answer that they thought they were going to get, right? right. Um, so, yes, it's a very mixed kind of session in a sense, which is very interesting. And well, it's kind of tailored, isn't it, to each individual, really? That's what we're Correct. saying. Yeah. Correct. So, you know, part of my nomadic experience at this point is living here with, a, with an old friend who I knew that once I'd arrived here, it wasn't the plan. It wasn't the plan at all. But I knew I needed to do work with this individual. So how I actually like to work, be, you know, beyond the online sessions and the channeling, that's really like, that's really beautiful, easy stuff. But to really strip away the distortions of cognitive dissonance and what is our reality? Who are you? What are you? How are you functioning? How, you know, all of that, I actually really like to spend time with people. So, um, and again, it depends on the client. It depends on their finances. It depends 
where they are, what they need. I mean, I have a client now who's got breast cancer. Have I have I dealt with that in the past? No, but do I know what to do? Yes. I've said to her, okay, cool. We're going to do two sessions a month for six months minimum. She said, I can't afford it. I said, okay, what can you afford? We begin the initiation. I like to work with souls who are committed. Um, you know, the channeling aspect is really beautiful and light and, and, and easy, you know, because it's easy for me to step into my heart. But, you know, going on a journey with an individual is a completely different experience because then we're stripping away the word of business, um, modality. Um, I, I just want to be the human with you. And we're going to move through this together. So for in, in Thailand, for example, say, you, you know, you may want to spend a week with me and I will curate something for you because I do breath work as well. I've obviously got the plant medicine space, but I actually want to live with you because in that, from that perspective, we can sit through so much, so much and move through so many of your stories because we're just re embodying storylines you know so to strip that and and you cannot do that in one channeling session no but if that's all they have of available course, to that's them, what they want that's right yeah amazing yeah, yeah. of course but you can go that far as well amazing. yeah okay yeah you know so for example sake you know next year i don't know where i'm going to be in europe but i have a feeling that I may have a client that wants to do deep ceremony work with me where I will say, well, let's void the um, let's void the payment. Can I live with you for a month? Because then we're going to get through some work. If someone comes to you then and they've got a, um, they're living with a lot of pain because they've gone through an accident or whatever, whatever's caused their issue, right? Yes. They come to you and they're looking for maybe pain relief. Mm -hmm. But do you think the issue they really got is something else? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I often, um, I don't, I don't work much with physical pain, um, but it's not to say I won't. So for example, sake, this, this particular client with breast cancer, I've not worked. Have I had clients with breast cancer within my ceremonial space? Yes. Um, um, you know, I've had someone come into ceremony with, uh, uh, she had a, a bit of, um, uh, you know, a rough and tumble with, with, a, with an ex and, and there was huge amounts of healing that was done on her ribs that the doctors were like, listen, this looks like it's been, it's a two month old injury. She was like, no, actually, um, you know, it's only a week old. The point I'm trying to make is, is I, I often work more with the, um, the emotional body and the mental body. But when it comes to the physical body, and it's why I've taken this client with breast cancer, because if I understand the nature of reality in the way that I do, all we have to do is access zero point each time in each healing session. What transpires from zero point is not for me to say. It is for me to assist my client and hold the space in taking her or him there and and, and we can do this over and over again. And things may come up from an ancestral point of view. Things may come up from a cosmic point of view. Things may come up from, you know, a conversation you had with your boss or when you were in kindergarten. And so these zero point spaces, I think, is where the magic is. And I think I've, I've been listening to um, more of a, a like a quantum physicist lately just to wrap my head around this. And, you know, what he says is, is pure energy is actually inertia. It's 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 the part before it moves into the hyperbole. You know, it, it it's that just pure potential space, and that's our zero point. So for me, I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let's bring each client into the zero point space if we are doing physical healing. You know, with the with the plant medicine, it is more emotional and mental healing. Um, and I do, I I will create it or curate it and create it. Um, based on on what needs to happen but some things are destined aren't they i mean if someone's watching this they've got a loved one that's not very well for example and you know they're trying to find a healer that's gonna heal that loved one to stay with us some things are destined i feel that there's a time for us all to transition yes. and nothing will stop that yes yes maybe yes. maybe you could help them to to 
make it you know to ease that pro, uh, process you know as they uh, as they on their for journey sure. to that but for um sure. like a death yeah to learn. Mm. a death to learn. It's, it's work that i i'm i mean i guess i do it you know i take people through an ego death that's not as not a <laughs> not a, a light topic um so yes to hold space through people's deaths and yes you're speaking to the physical death but and and yes some things are predetermined death is you know that that is we come in we're gonna die um but i do believe when one begins to take accountability and responsibility and understanding the patterns of one's soul contract and why things have come in and karmic links etc etc then we can begin to change the coding change the algorithm and control alt delete and recreate and this is that empowered state of being absolutely it is well let's get to the plant medicine work as well because i just want to make sure we cover that because that's a big part of your work so you do plant medicine journeys um obviously i don't know too much about this side of your work so if we just okay. stick with the the mushroom um, the journeys with mushrooms that you do. This is yeah. with groups of people. I have worked with groups and I do privates. I'm really, I'm a really strong group facilitator. Um, and it's wonderful to do group work because from a, um, from an energetic perspective within, within the earth, you know, field, I know that we're doing, we're doing so much more. We're shifting so much more energy, but as an individual soul, having done these journeys for the last eight and a half to almost nine years now, it's quite taxing. And so one of the reasons I've come to Europe is just to have a little bit of a break. And I will do groups again in um, in South Africa. But while I'm traveling around Europe, it's more that one on one where I want to spend four to five days with you. I want to do at least three breathwork sessions with you. I really want to dive in, you know, Makes sense. because the work is the work on that day. The journey is the journey on that day. But what unfolds after that journey is the rest of your life and potentially your awakening and then potentially your dark night of the soul. And that's a huge responsibility for me as a soul. Of course it is. So why mushrooms compared to something like uh, ayahuasca? And have you tried both? And what, what's the difference in a sense? Yeah. So mushrooms was sort of my first, um, like I said, entry into psychedelic space. LSD was not really on my list. Have I taken LSD? Yes. But, you know, less than five times in my life, which is, yeah, it's mushrooms just entered into my space and just they are the most incredible um heart connectors they are just so magical um and yes actually the first plant medicine journey that i did so i had been taking mushrooms recreationally um, but the first plant medicine journey that i did was ayahuasca and i i actually went to the ayahuasca and beforehand and i said listen I really want to start serving mushrooms, but I don't want to be viewed as just another um, hippie jumping on the bandwagon here to make a quick buck when I don't have the training, et cetera, et cetera. And he said to me, you know, we can talk about this till we blue in the face, but you need to come do an Aya journey with me. And I was shitting myself. I was really, really terrified. And um, I think we did two nights and in the journey, I got told this is your work, not his, because I was going to say, well, you're the shaman. I'll organize the business aspect of it. You know, I, but you're going to, you're going to do it for me. So, you know, and in the ayah, I got told this is your work. It's not his work. And, um, and so, yes, you know, I had that kind of calling from there and I was like, and then he said, do you still need me? I was like, no, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so take us through then uh, the sort of uh, process, the ceremonial process that takes place for people that may want to attend um, a yeah. group um, Beautiful. session. Yeah. So basically, the first thing would be to to touch base with me either on the website. From there, I kind of move you through a process of a form. Uh, so it's like your first kind of client con uh, consult. And that form is about a 120 point form of which let's call it a hundred points are questions. And through that evaluation, um, I can really, really tune into your soul aspects 
and we go through, you know, traumas, medication, um, you know, where are you within your mental space? Is there any mental dis-ease happening? Are you on pharmaceuticals? Um, have you smoked marijuana? How did it make you feel? Um, did you used to have any extrasensory perceptions when you were a child? This is a really interesting one because most, or from what I can tell, a lot of um, plant medicine facilitators don't ask this question. And so I begin to evaluate where are you within your psychic realms, within your psychic gifts, because I don't want to, they, they're, they're sitting dormant. I don't want to blast you open and, and move you into an unnecessary dark night of the soul without preparation. So there's first a form that you fill out. At the end of the form are these reclamation statements. And these are really, really important in my work. And basically what it's what it's alluding to is consent. Do you take accountability and responsibility as a soul, as a free woman and man within the laws of the universe? Do you understand what you are engaging in contractually with me? Do you understand the human laws around this medicine? Do you understand that the byproducts of this experience may not be how you perceive them to be? You may change your sexual orientation. You may divorce your husband. There are many things that can happen. And this is the magic of the medicine. Okay. And so do you take accountability and responsibility? So based on how people answer that, I can I can give a huge evaluation of, of, of where they're at and, and whether they're ready or not. And obviously, there's a few red flags, you know. Of course, um, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we move into a space of um on my page I have a, a membership portal. So you'll you'll get access to the membership portal where we move through pre-ceremony preparation with regards to diet, medication, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how to get off a technology beforehand, because this is creating such an imprint in our subconscious mind and therefore our reality. And when that starts coming up on medicine journeys, it's it's, it's not yours. It's bullshit that should have been cleaned beforehand. So how do we clean the body? How do we clean the frequency? How do we come in as pure and pristine as possible so that I don't have to work my ass off because it's already enough of a job, right? Um, so, so it's that preparation portal. And within that, I'm constantly tuning into your frequencies. If I'm feeling fear, do you need another phone call? Do you uh, you know, am I feeling any resistance? Are you still eating meat? Are you still having your bottle of vodka on, on Friday nights? Are you actually preparing? So I'm really tuned into everyone in the group. Um, so they're, de and, yeah, they're they detox based, they're detox before they come see you uh, and even detox, yes. even if I guess they're on prescription medication, that will just stop just for the period that you're going to do this. And then if they need to get back on it, fine. But just for this period. Correct. Yeah. So you're starting off in a very um, sacred space anyway, right? Which is very difficult for people to get in, I can imagine. Um, yes. And how long and does it... And also familiar to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, and how long does the ceremony last for? How long does the, the sort of uh, trip last for, in a sense? Um, is, is that on a, over, over a number of hours on, on, as part yeah. of the weekend, yeah? So how I like to work is um, as you arrive, we, I like to do tra some trauma release exercises first. So and really just getting because, again, like people are nervous. We're like, I'm going to die. My ego is oh, my control mechanisms, you know, so I just like to get people comfortable. So we just do a couple of trauma release exercises and just really opening the throat. I'm a bit of a clown in the sense that, you know, I can really get people to go crazy and make animal sounds and just so we just get comfortable with each other. So that will be the first thing, trauma release. And then I move into a 70-minute breathwork session. And this is also um, further trauma release. And what happens there is it's, it's, it's a very ancestral experience. So those people that are looking to um, connect with um, past loved ones that have passed on, they're usually waiting for the mushrooms to do this, you know, but these ancestors begin to come in in the breathwork already. Um, so you can imagine people coming out of the breathwork and being like, oh my God, if that was the breathwork, then what are the mushrooms going to be like? You know, because they're preparing for the big plant medicine journey, but we forget how powerful the breath is. This is the this is the actual technology is the breath. That's how we build the light body, right? And so, 
Um, so then we've done the breath work. I just let them calm down and cool off. And actually, um, you know, this is over a 24 hour space of time and it's actually too much work for them. So it's why I want to do more retreat work. Um, so anyway, then after that, we'll do a really full hour long briefing where I explain what happens and um, that it's going to be a six hour long experience that at hour number three and a half to hour number five, you're going to begin experiencing ABC. Um, this is, you know, these are the things that could happen. It doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. Um, and all these things, I explain how, how the space is held, that we, we sit in silence, we sit in sacred um, silence, that please listen, please allow yourself to be vulnerable, please allow us to assist, let go of all control, that you may move into a childlike state, you may be terrified, petrified, but what comes up must come down you know and so after that six hours we will sit around the fire and then in the mornings I do a full brief debriefing with everybody because um it's it's important to unwrap everything I did mushrooms in Amsterdam and um I know the next day I was fine but yeah that trip was uh <laughs> that was powerful um Powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Uh, and this... know, and a lot of a lot of people actually, um, from from my experience, a lot of people that have done ayahuasca because that was kind of the first medicine that was coming in, and and it was you know the trend, everything trends. And I'd come, I'd have people come in with their you know their little ayahuasca badges, and be like, yeah, oh, no, I've had my ego death. And then you give them a, a hero dose of mushrooms, and they're just like oh my gosh, I was not prepared for that. I was not ready for that. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. Um, but based on the frequency these days, I am changing the, um, the, the dosage a little bit more. Whereas before, you know, pre 2020 timeline, I was like, you're going to get your five grams and that's it, you know? Um, whereas now I'm, um, things are different. The, the, our whole entire landscape and political scape and, and existential scape is completely different and we need to be very slow very careful and just an, an absolute honor um, so I will dose you according to what your consciousness can withstand at that point in time yes well that's why without, without robbing you without robbing you of the experience you know yeah, well, that's why I guess the questionnaire is so important to you as well. Um, yes. Um, it just helps you to really mentally understand where they're coming from. And then I guess you're tuning in as well and, you know, you're able to see, you know, yeah. uh, frequency-wise where they're coming from as well. So, yes. um, and I guess, you know, at the end of it, most people say that was a very empowering process. Um, yes. Yeah. It's life change. Life change, I mean, it's yeah. An absolute milestone, but then so is the breath work, and this is why you know those twenty four hour sessions that it needs to dissipate because a lot of the empowered experience through the breath works gets forgotten after you've done the mushrooms, and it's just you know the breath is just incredible, incredible. Absolute. Well, thank you for sharing that. I wanted just to get that side of your work in there because you've done that for a while now and uh, you've yes. done many retreats as well and I know you'll continue to do that so I appreciate you just sharing that with us because it's uh, an Thank important you. part of your work uh, very yeah. quickly then because obviously I know that uh, we're well into this interview right now you mentioned at the very beginning of this interview you well I think you did you mentioned uh, being a light worker and a star seed and um, would you class like a light worker as a, as a sort of healer really that's all it really is um, how, how would you for those that may not have come across that, well, I'm, you know, I'm sure my, most of my audits have, but if they're watching this for the first time, just in case. I don't, I feel like light work has come in very many different shapes and forms. I feel like the old lady down the road who always smiles is the light worker. She may be an accountant, you know, she may not be the, the healer or the divinely, touched by by Mary Magdalene channel um, but she inspires a smile daily for people walking past her shop or, or, or whatever you know I think that is a light worker um, I think we all have different technologies and blueprints and coding and we are all 
that latent energy, that inertia at any point in time, because when we take into consideration, again, I keep mentioning this 550 million, let's extend it. Let's really, really look deep within and how many things we have been, how we have evolved, how we've been water, air, earth, fire, rocks, you know, a multitude of things, um, you know, let's call it gods, goddesses, but human beings that have actually been in war for a long time. Um, you know, what technologies are out there? I believe a light worker, or, or let's call it like that Christ at heart, you know, that Christ at heart, that, that, that Christ energy, what does that mean? Is, and I believe everybody has the potential to be that. So whether you call that a light worker or not, I believe this is what being a human should be. Can we be compassionate and heart centered? I mean, that is the message of the Christ, right? <laughs> Everything else, I mean, I can go bleep, bleep, bleep and talk about technologies from outer space and ET encounters and, and the amazing things that I've experienced in deep initiation work within within medicine spaces but it's the basic stuff isn't it that we're still basics we're still (laughs) challenged by it always the basics i mean i know it's interesting to look at those other subjects but (laughs) look how much we're suffering in the basics we all are exactly exactly we haven't even got that far yet yeah yeah so this is why your work's important um now you talk a lot about uh, 3d to 5d as well um what is your understanding of 3d to 5d I mean, we can talk about this from very many angles, but I would talk about, let me let me talk about it from the psychological aspect. I feel like 3D, um, a 3D entrained mind is a mind that is going to be um, constantly gratifying itself or the personality self through the constructs of physicality, material things, the news, being up to date, what are the Joneses doing? Did I go to Croatia this this holiday? You know, did we get our Swarovski earrings? And you know, all of these kind of things. We must be, um, we must always be updated with the news. Have you bought those new stocks? Da, 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 da. Are you informed of this political leader, this political leader, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So that would be my 3D modeling mind of like completely oblivious to the elements of the spirit of the ether, you know? Um, and you know, your 5D aspect is simply the heart. The heart, and this is where I talk about embodied spiritual experience. It's, it's not in the mind. It's not in the mind. It is stemming from the entire body. Yeah, is this it's exploding from you, you know. And there's no stopping that force field of energy. Um, you know, so simply put, that would be my five, you know, my 5D thing. It's the heart. But if we go further into the dynamics of it, what does it mean? Um, you know, do can you begin to understand that you are multidimensional, that your dreams actually mean something? Um, can you begin to understand that you you always existed? And 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 let's maybe break it down and say, cool, there were past lives, or that you you continue after you die, you know. Um, can we have these kind of discussions in depth and that there's a shadow side to you, dear madam and sir, you know, like. Um, well, we've all got that. that. Yeah, absolutely. We've all got that. And that, that does help also have an influence on on issues that we have, I think. Um, yeah. But we don't always want to deal with them, do we? <laughs> no. No, it's difficult. It's hard. It's, it's you know, of it's course. hard for all of us. But I think what you're saying is the more you can even deal with it just on your own without having to share it, right? You know, it, and be yes. true to yourself. Um, yes. And, um, but it's wanting to do it, isn't it? It's it's that yes. self-responsibility, you know. Tell- but also I feel like, I feel like many of the 3D mindsets, they wouldn't even know that it exists. I feel they are in such a program, you know, and this is where we talk about spiritual distortion. These programs and inverted systems have been there for so long and they're in this amnesia and and their pineal gland is completely calcified. And there's just no, unless it's a plant medicine journey, a boom into your multidimensional omniversal self. And this is where the plants come in, you know, of like Jesus, like... (laughs) 
There's no running away. If we're right, yeah. This is why there's a teacher for everyone, and you will attract your flock and continue to. And, uh, and however it resonates with people, it, it either resonates for them because they're at that level, or you know they're they're ready for some. They're maybe better off somewhere else right now. But it's just correct. Correct. We may want to stay in the love and light and just do full moon ceremonies and you know, sing Kumbaya in, 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 to the waters, it's still a good frequency being emitted. You know, it's still a good frequency. And this is what we have to understand. Everything is energy, but we also need to become masters and see through distortion, see through our own bullshit and begin to ask, okay, are we using our energy efficiently enough based on what's happening on planet Earth at this moment, even though we're not saviors of the planet either? No, we're not. No, we're not. And um, I'll end it sort of on this theme as well, because I know we've, we're at the end right now. But I'll go back to the beginning of this conversation, which I think is important, that um, being true to yourself, being true to enjoying what you do, regardless what anyone else thinks of it, as long as you're not knowingly hurting anyone from doing it, If people love you, they'll, they'll support you. And if they don't support you, if it goes against what they feel is God or God's God's kind of mm. work or decent type mm. of work, um, mm. that's where they're at. And you've got to love yeah. them for it, of I, I think. And that's yeah. that Christic energy, you know. Everything is, everything is in divine order as it is. Yes, we with our you know, the spiritual we can say, oh, it's a bit frustrating. I wish people would wake up. But the beauty and the magic of it is none of this actually exists. It's, and, and we are, and, and more than anything, we are creating it. We are creating it. Well, that's it. such we a so powerful friends. statement that you end on. What, what if none of this was real? And actually, it really, none of it's real. And it's just, a, you know, <laughs> not assimilation in a sense, but it's one analogy or one way of, us to understand what this really may be is to think of it like that but it's not really that maybe it's something we can't understand but it, it acts like that but just as simple okay. as what you said we create this if we wanted to go do something tomorrow different we could but you've got to get the mind out of the way you've got to get the heart incented and, and you you know it all means becoming true to yourself there yeah, is you know there is a timing for everything as well yes Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And we can do all the, the, the things, but... What if the timing's not right? We have to build that light body, you know? We have to build the light body for these experiences to happen. Yes. I mean, I, well, I'm just saying, what if what's really putting you off, which you can't understand, is actually there's a timing for it? And it's yes. all to do with when things are meant to be. Even though we've got free will, there is something sometimes that, oh, thank God I did it this time, or, you know... But then again, some people look back, don't they, and say, I wish I'd done that years ago. But um, yeah, yeah I'm, I, but I'm sure there's a path that's ready when it's going to appear like the master appears. Okay, um, your website one final time. Is Brigitte Heeb, B-R-I-G-I-T-T-E, the very German Brigitte, Heeb, H-E-E-B, dot Kartra, dot com. And all my social media sort of channels are Brigitte Heeb or Ascension Medicine. You can catch me on YouTube, um, Vero, which is a Russian social media channel. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Vero, YouTube, um, Instagram, and Facebook. Facebook is, is Ascension Medicine or Brigitte Heb. You will find me. Okay, well, we're going to link all that in the description below. The links have been coming thank up on the so screen much. as well. And Brigitte, I just want to thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing just bits of your journey, which I'm sure will inspire many. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate the time and this connection that we had an opportunity to have in my in my holographic creation. I am in deep appreciation. Mm -hmm.